this is Sue Murphy with the Early Learning Coalition of North Florida. Happy February and happy Valentine month and happy love and all sorts of good feelings. But we know not only will we see love, we might see some sadness, we might see some madness, we might see some sleepiness, and we might see some scared or frightened behavior. So what we'd like to do this month is talk about books. You can identify characters in books with these simple feelings. And then once you talk about books, and let's just say Mama Llama is feeling with her baby Llama was being bullied in school, or just use any of the books in your library to talk about these feelings, you can follow up with showing them how to do simple self-soothing techniques for the classroom. So easy. You know you've got them in a group setting, so you can just slow it down. You can slow it down by having them stand up and start stretching. Stretch with them. Stretch slowly. Stretch deeply. While you're doing it, you might even include breathing. Please don't have them inhale and exhale any more than their chronological age, but it's so wonderful for you to And I promise you, by the time you've inhaled, exhaled, and stretched four times, your disposition emotionally in the class has slowed down. Another thing that is a great idea is have them crisscross applesauce in circle time and squeeze their hands. They don't even need a squishy. They just need their hands. They just need to squish back and forth. They also can put their hands on the floor and push up and push up. This hits the acupuncture points of their hands and it works to soothe them. I love to walk. I love to walk in place for maybe two to three minutes. Walk low, walk on your tippy toes, walk slow, walk fast. And after three to four minutes of that, you've got some self-soothing behavior. Jump up and down is a great self-soothing for frustration and madness. Up and down and up and down. And you let them jump until they sit down calmly because they're all too tired to move on. Breathing again is so key. Breathing. Also drinking a glass of water slowly. That is, it does wonders to the disposition of a child individually. Listening to music, soothing, nature sounds, I find really work the, the best with birds singing, water flowing, rivers, so forth and so on. Another idea to do is yoga. Yoga, you sit down, you put your hands out, and you're breathing together, but you're doing it. And the children in the circle hear each other and you actually get in a rhythmic pattern. Also imagination with blowing bubbles. Here's the container of bubbles that I hand to each child. Here is their blower. We stick it in and we'll On these cold mornings, you can do some hot cocoa passing. I pass them a pretend cup of cocoa, ask them to sip it. Oh, mine was too hot, so I gently blow it to cool this off. Also, counting is a wonderful way. One, two, three, or almost rhythmic and hypnotic, just slowing them down. And those patterns, when you set them, really keep them calm. Um, I have lots of these that I can hand out. So you can give us a call at the Early Learning Coalition office in St. Augustine, and we can put one in the mail for you. I always kept one of these by my chair at circle time because I never knew if I was gonna have happy, sad, sleepy, mad, scared, a combination, or just some or one of them. But my all-time favorite is if you've got some extra plates in your house. These are called finger labyrinths. Have the child have each one in circle time. They start at a star. They just move to music back and forth. And if you notice, very directed, they're very focused, and they begin to feel very calm. Use your imagination. I try to use gentle colors like blue and yellow. It seems to calm the children down. I have a st whole stack of them for my class. They work well. Thanks so much. So glad you joined us. Don't forget to look at our YouTube station. Like us so we keep on doing this. Take care and see you next month.